evening and welcome to uh, the regular board meeting, uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education uh, for Baltimore School District 161, uh, Monday, November 9th, 2015. Does we have a roll call, Mrs. Majewski? Sure. Simmons? Here. Odom? Here. Harrell? Here. Marks? Here. Four. Huckabee? Here. Paredes? Here and quorum is present. <coughs> Uh, at this time, we will go to executive session for a few minutes um, to discuss uh, for, uh, matters relating to personnel 5 ILCS 120-2C1. We'll be back in about five minutes. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. We are now returned uh, to um, the open session of the regular board meeting. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, audience comments, and I just like to uh, ask you to forgive me. I didn't bring my reading glasses today. I left my other pair at school, and so I'm, if uh, I'm not as polished, uh, it is because I frankly am having trouble uh, distinguishing between letters, and I ask your, your forgiveness. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, we are on to. Uh, Audience comments? Uh, this time there are no uh, audience comments. And so uh, we'll move on to the next agenda. I thank you very much. Um, which is the recognition of students who have qualified for the cross country state Yeah, thank you. Yeah. and our players in a second. Let me just give you a real quick background on cross country this year. They did a phenomenal job and it started way back in July. A lot of our student runners took on the challenge to run 100 hours over the summer. That's 100 hours more than this guy ran right here. Uh, in the blazing heat to get themselves ready for the season. When the season opened, they had over 100 people, 100 students come out and run. Um, they competed in a bunch of conference meets as well as some sectional tournaments or some uh, regional tournaments. They competed in the conference tournament final over to Apollo Park. That was all the teams in our conference. Seventh grade boys, seventh grade girls, eighth grade boys, eighth grade girls, all won first place overall. Those four races, they swept them clean. Uh, went to the sectional. Coaches will correct me on this, but I believe they set either nine or ten personal fast best records, um, not just personal records, but school records, and then went downstate. We took 11 students downstate. They were very competitive. Both coaches have done a fantastic job over the last three to five years building up the program, getting some enthusiasm for students to run. I will tell you that cross country is not a sport that gets a lot of publicity, but there's no doubt in my mind that those athletes work as hard, if not harder, than any of the uh, other athletes at our school. They do very, very good job. So I'd like to have Coach Mark Eigenlob and Coach Tim Germeron, who are both with us, come on up. <laughs> All of the runners that are here tonight, have them come up, and then I know the superintendent and board will like their attention. Sure, all right. Uh, Devin Gorton, right. we'll, we'll start line here. Eric Gerke. Xavier Frazier, Jake Goldberg, Jason Hunter, Jerron Burns, Ian Barrow. Joe Sullivan is not here, but he was also part of our team, so I'd like to mention him as well.
Coaches, thank you very much. Great season. Um, 
Timmy Janelle Odom. Lisa Harrell. Thank you. John Simmons. On behalf of Heather Hill, I'd like to address two board members today. Our citizens are offered for you for
to all of our families in School District 161, and thank you for upholding excellence to its finest standard. Thank you. Next, 
will be job postings for Director of Special Education and Heather Hill Principal. I'm working on that right now. We plan on posting at the end of November, first part of December, so that we can have a higher um, recommended to the Board of Education in the spring sometime. I will give more information as we continue. Number six. STEM and STEAM exploration. So with STEM, um, I've had meetings with 153 superintendent, the high school superintendent. We will be going to uh, Deerfield on the 30th of November, and then we're going to go to St. Charles on November 16th to see what their middle schools are doing. I'm looking at a program um, to possibly implement or see what the costs are associated with it, et cetera. We want to see a tie from elementary schools to the high schools. So the three of us will be traveling. I'll also be taking uh, Dr. Wark with me and one of my administrators from uh, Parker. We'll be uh, going along, we'll be asking a bunch of questions and bringing information back. So hopefully we can uh, design a plan to bring it to the Board of Education in the spring and we're going to go. And the last thing will be socket to cancer. And we'd like to congratulate all of our students, families, and staff for the generosity in collecting over exactly $2,297.08 for um, Cure Search for Kids. So it was an excellent, excellent job. Our kids did, did very well, as well as our staff. They contributed to our families. So that concludes my report. Any questions? All right, thank you. Next on the agenda. Uh, we have today several, <coughs> I'm sorry, we have approval of consent agenda items uh, listed below, uh, specifically uh, minutes of the Board of Education meeting October 13, 2015, Executive Session meeting October 13, 2015, Committee of a Whole meeting uh, October 26, 2015, and Executive Session meeting October 26, 2015. I second. Um, Mrs. Juicy, can we have a roll call, please? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there's no discussion that this has changed. I'm going to have to move this out. Oh, okay. I apologize. What, uh, which one was that? Can I do it without consent to gentlemen? Consent agenda item, we are not including the October 26th, I'm sorry, October 13th, did you say? Mm -hmm. October 13th, uh, regular. regular Board of Education meeting. First one, yeah. No, that would be the first one. Okay, so we need the roll call. Carol? Yeah. 
Ford? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Odom? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Marks? Yes. Paredes? Yes, the motion is passed. Um, and, let me see this. You will forgive me. Where is this after it says approval of this? It says reads, however, due to the fact that she was neither, that she neither was unable. Unable to discuss the legal bills. We were uh, <coughs> allowed to discuss them. Okay. Any questions about the legal bills? Sure. We didn't return my call, so it says respond no response. I did not receive a response back from the board president, and I was not allowed to discuss them during the meeting. Okay. So that's what that sentence says. It just says neither was unable. Okay. So you want to take out neither? I think that I'm going to was unable to discuss the legal bills. Well, it's, not exa it's kind of misleading because you did call me two hours before the meeting, uh, so I did not have a chance to um, respond. Um, why don't we do this? It's not it's not it's just just oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. You can take out that there. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, then I make a motion to accept the. Um, the minutes for the Board of Education meeting, uh, October 13th, uh, with the, can we do this now or do we put this for next week? Uh, with the um, edit of removing the word neither from that section of the minutes. Second. Hmm? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Second. This is over. Or, Yes. Owen? Yes. Hero? Yes. Uh, Mark? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Paredes? Yes. The motion is passed. There's a point of order, I'm not sure. Um, sure. For, when it comes to signature, then do I just make that change before it's not just make a change? Okay. You make the change initially, and then you make it in the final. Okay, next up on the agenda, we have uh, some information action items, approval of the bills. Uh, I will make a call for motion to approve the bills of the amount of uh, 767,721 dollars 42 uh, Oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, okay, the bills are submitted for approval by the Board of Education each month. Uh, John Simmons was asked to review the bills for month of November and has the opportunity and has had the opportunity to review them prior to the meeting. The total of bills for this month are $767,721.42. Mr. Simmons. I move to approve the bills as presented in the amount of $767,721.42. Second. Mr. Juicy. Odom? Yes. Carol? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Marks? Yes. Ford? Yes. Paredes? Yes, and the motion is passed. Next on the agenda is the uh, approval of the personnel report. Uh, I make a motion. Is this one? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me, I can't. I'm in trouble. Uh, sorry, next on the uh, Agenda is the approval of payroll. Uh, the payroll is submitted for approval by the Board of Education each month. Uh, payroll is calculated for the month of October as documented on the attached report. Uh, the total for payroll for the month of October is $1,318,398.25. Uh, I make a motion to approve the payroll uh, for this amount uh, for the month of October as presented. <coughs> Who's the first? The second? Who's the one? This is Bodum, sir. So, here all the Yes. Marks? Yes. Bodum? Yes. Bodum? Yes. Yes. Ford? Yes. Arrow? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Parade? Yes, and the motion is passed. Next on the agenda is the approval of the personnel report. I make a motion to strike. <coughs> so 
Break the last um, personnel agenda item from the personnel report uh, and otherwise accept it as presented. So moved. Yes. Okay. We have a roll call, Mrs. Majewski? Simmons? Yes. Errol? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Odo? Yes. Marks? Yes. Ford? Yes. Paredes? Yes, and the motion is passed. Next on the agenda is the approval of landscape and snow removal bids. I call for a motion to approve Desiderio Landscaping LLC as the winning bidder for the landscaping services for the next three years. Uh, I call for a motion to approve Desiderio Landscaping LLC as the winning bidder for the landscaping services for the next three years. That's snow removal. That's okay, so this said, oh, you know what this said, uh, landscaping twice. It does. Okay, I should say soon. So, uh, once again, uh, I will call for a motion to approve Desideria Landscaping LLC as the winning bidder for the snow removal services in the next three years, uh, as well as call for a motion to approve Desideria Landscaping LLC as the winning bidder for the landscaping services in the next three years. No, this said snow, I've said snow here. Landscaping services for the next three years. We have a second. Mrs. Harold. Yeah, that's right. Um, how is uh, three years is the typical of the That is our history. Mr. Sims. <coughs> the ballpark of how this potential bid might get approved compares to the pricing that we just came out of. They're identical. The pricing is done. Desiderio did not raise the prices from the last. So if this is approved, we have the same prices for the last, well, previous three years and the next three years. So we'll have six years of the same price. Yep. The price is on a per event basis. And Desiderio is the incumbent provider for both landscaping and snow removal. Sure, can you put your thoughts on that? I think that was a 
Is there any discussion regarding the supporting of state authorized charter schools? Well, the previous year that we that I was a, on the delegate and last year, Steve was the, the delegate. Um, there is loads of opposition. This is the hottest, most, the longest discussed on the floor at the delegate center. There's loads of school districts who come out against it. Woodland has always been the one who pushes, is pushing it forward. I, I guess that's why I'm asking the why why is it coming? Is there a particular reason why it was coming out by ASB two The delegates, when we do get choice, right, when we end up doing the vote, they kind of need to <coughs> the support that it's a good you know. And there's a vote of the um, the executive board on what the resolution is going to go forward. And then usually the executive board approves most resolutions because they just want the delegates to be able to voice their opinions on them. Um, when the floor speaks, it usually gets you, but they put it forward again. I think this might be what the third work here for them to put this resolution forward again. So it was not in 2012. And it wasn't. It was amended in 2014. We keep doing, no, we keep at, at the existing position. delegate assembly, the vote is always against them putting this forward. But it hasn't been, this is really, this is an existing position. Be, because IASB took the position, their position originally, when it was resolved, like they're doing now. Then it goes to the delegate assembly. When they say this is the position, it's the position of the executive board, the committee on resolutions. So the resolutions committee sits, they come up with what they're going to support. Then we vote on it as the delegate assembly. So this is strictly about, to be clear, this isn't about charter schools and their existence. This is about funding. Just funding. This is, this is, a, this is a good resolution in that it doesn't touch whether or not charter schools should exist. It touches that charter schools should be, the funding should be addressed in such a way as to not impact public school districts who may lose students or <coughs> charter schools might negatively impact. That's, that's why, that's what it's about. So it's not, the, the title is, you know, it's not about authorizing charter schools. It's about um, addressing the way um, the financial impact is. <coughs> So my, my original question was, I do understand the ISB has no authority to, to authorize. So that was not my question. I was just really asking about the discussion point about what the discussion was since I was on the floor. But I understand some of the problems that are here with um, the council. Why people were really not supporting us and say that the beginning of they were supporting this. That's why we about the discussion. The mo most of the discussions are that the money is ta being taken from the smaller school districts that don't have much money, a lot of money already. Say, for example, a big opponent against the it is um, Calumet City. They don't have a lot of funding already for their public school system, and the charter schools are coming in, you know, pulling the funds from and the students from their regular public school system. So that's the biggest objection to the way that the funding is going. And then the voucher system, everyone has pretty much a statement of, you know, not doing vouchers. So um, that's about the biggest part of it. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> um, on the recommendation of the Illinois Association of School Board to recommend that we adopt this resolution, um, are those any, how many are in support? Support. Support. Any opposed? On the school construction grant program, it is being recommended that we do adopt this resolution. And Steve, I, that's so funny that you circled this. Research demonstrates that a new school facility lifts, lifts the academic and emotional bodies of the students and staff. And that's the biggest argument that we get up and argue about is whether or not it, the 
continuing to build new buildings and not utilizing the ones that exist already, whether that's fiscally responsible. And apparently there's a lot in, say, Chicago, where they close down buildings and then there's building other buildings and they take them on the way. But of course, the argument is that a lot of buildings who spend too much money trying to bring them up to the safety, to the safe safety standards and, you know, cost less to rebuild the building. But anyway. Um, the school construction grant program. Are there any more discussion or questions? So this is this is about making sure the grants are paid back and they're already been sanctioned or one voter approval for school construction are paid back in an order <coughs> but they're not pushed to the bottom of the list. It's about prioritizing the needs. Well that's what it reads when you read it. <coughs> the the argument about it is more um, about just the idea of building new buildings, period. That's what they argue about on the floor. But I, I read what right. I said that's what it reads. It says about the reads that they want to priority rank school districts that have, so that the ones that would have the funds available to them would get the construction done first. Correct. I'm not understanding what you're saying. That's okay. I didn't have a resolution, so I don't have an answer for that. Very good. Any other discussion? All those in favor of supporting the recommendation of the Illinois Association School Board to adopt this resolution? Any opposed? Okay, so we have those new ones. The, what, how I normally do this for new members is that we are, if there were any particular resolutions in the packet that you want me to speak on or that you have a specific opinion for or against, other than what is recommended. Does anyone have any, uh, I have one that's really toward the back, which um, is, I can wait. If anyone has any questions though, ones that are more toward the front of the packet, I can hold off on that. Okay, so um, my position on this, and I made this last time, uh, which was a 511 school employee strike for the Illinois Association of School Boards. So strong. So page 26. Oh, I'm so strong. Page 27. Page 27. legislation forbidding public school employees from striking. The association uh, shall also work with legislators, the Illinois State Board of Education and Teachers Union to develop alternatives to striking, including mediation and binding arbitration. Um, I am opposed to any legislation that forbids striking. Uh, I will say this, that, you know, striking is something that teachers really don't want to do. This is like a worst case scenario in that uh, already by default, uh, teachers associations will seek out, by and large, um, to uh, find ways to to come to some sort of an agreement. Um, but uh, I would I don't think that uh, making it illegal to strike uh, is in the best interest of our schools. I think that should be an option. It's always open to uh, teachers to association. Um, however. Um, and I think with that, that it does exist, I think that that creates an environment by which there's a very strong motivation to find a middle ground so that it never occurs. Uh, strikes, generally speaking, really, you know, everybody loses. And so this is not a case of, well, if I don't get my way, I'm going to strike. Um, so are you making a motion as to that? Yes. <coughs> that I'm not in favor of that. Are you which, making a motion as to that particular section? Yes. So what, how would you like me to vote or the board to vote? Okay, I would like the board to vote to remove that from that particular section. Is that how typically we do this? 
Yeah. So I make a motion to uh, our board to vote on what you want. Right. I make a motion for our board to remove um, 5.11 school employee strikes from the um, reaffirmation of existing divisions. Reaffirm. There's no 
There's no language that speaks okay. to I was I can I can use this a lesson or a we can meet together individually so that I can go through how the process works and that way you'll be excited. I have a that is unclear on that. I, I apologize. I was there last year, so it's very clear. Oh, I, I've been there a lot, but I've never heard, that's why I was asking, because I've never heard that. What do you mean by this? I don't think it's clear up um, that uh, it, it, is, it works kind of like the consent agenda. If uh, you don't want to then go to accept and you'd like to pull out a specific issue from this, you can do that, and then it can be opened up for discussion. Um, yeah, and so. Um, current positions. Current positions. Not, not, not reaffirmation of, of existing positions, no, no. but of current positions. Those, all the things in here are things that um, you either reaffirm, and you reaffirm again, or you um, you vote to change. So, for example, because of the, the purpose of this is um, the school board association you know, tries to uh, change existing laws in uh, Springfield <coughs> so that, for example, you know, it can hopefully change the way that, just arbitrarily, um, you know, the Prevailing Wage Act. You know, it has a specific position on the Prevailing Wage Act. It keeps trying to push uh, certain things. And um, if it turns out that people want to discuss that and that, the majority of the delegates say, you know what, let's do something different than we did last year, then they will no longer uh, uh, push for this in Springfield. They will push for something different. So, but that's when the board would have to put that forward as a reaffirmation of existing positions. Those are the only ones that are voted on, correct? Right? Yeah, everything in here. You vote for everything in here. Everything is Everything is packaged. So here's how I understand. Uh, this is the last sentence on page eight. Reaffirmation or deletion of existing positions will be done with a single motion unless a delegate wishes a particular position or positions to be considered separate. So what we are directing the SOTA to do here by way of a majority vote is to raise issue with one or more existing positions to be considered separate. That's correct. And at that point, the entire uh, body of delegates will then make a decision. So that someone will come up, they will say, I don't think we should have this. I think we should change our position on this. Another person will come up and say, I either agree or disagree. Uh, at some point, the uh, discussion is called, and then you vote. That's. That's how it works. So Ms. Odom will say something like, I wish you consider 511 separately. A majority of my board does not support this position any longer and uh, feels that it should be altered or removed. That is correct. And look for consensus among right. hundreds of delegates. Right. So once, if there is a majority that supports uh, what we have voted for, then the position will go the other way. Okay. If uh, historically, of course, it doesn't, um, and in many cases, you know, in some cases last year, uh, people brought this. Up. <coughs> they made a good plea, and it did go the other way. Okay. So five eleven is put to bed, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five two, I believe. Five four two against. Yeah. To sign with your your uh, position. Right. Now you understand many states. Striking is illegal. We happen to not be one of those states. Okay. Did you have uh, an issue this morning? You know what? It's funny because I, you know, Mr. Price probably knew which one I was going to pick. So that would be the only way. That, now, the Illinois Association of School Boards uh, does work to repeal that legislation because it is financially um, burdensome to school districts and to taxpayers. It costs us frequently a lot of money to pay those kinds. Uh, wages and not have the option to uh, take a lowest a lowest bid, including a low bid. Um, so I would like to ask that we seek the reaffirmation of the Homer Association Sports um, stance on the Prevail Wage Act. So I, I think that would require no action. No action. I, no. Well, but that's the piece I was asking.
asking about was how do you get them moved to the place where you vote on the affirmation of existing? And it's got a single motion on that, unless motion. somebody pulls it out. Right, so that's why I'm asking if I see these are reaffirmations, yeah. and they do adopt. So that's why I'm asking how do you, this is all I'm saying that that shows extra support. But I was no, sure not as I didn't say extra support. I'm saying it is similar to the way that we do our consent agenda. If there is something on the consent agenda, like you just did, you took out October 13th. We vote on those things that one person, like yourself, says, I want to remove well, this forward. from the reaffirmation. This is at the Illinois Association of School Board Delegate Assembly. Otherwise, they make one motion, just like we do, I have to approve the consent agenda. We make one motion to approve all of the reaffirmations of the Illinois Association of School Boards. If there is one person who wants to take something out, as Mr. Floridius and the board have directed me, to make a motion to remove the leaf from the reaffirmation vote, 5.11. However, if you are in support of the reaffirmation of 5.05 for Valley Wage Act, then I don't need to stand up and ask them to remove that from the vote. So, I'm seriously not being difficult. I absolutely do not understand then why we're voting on two specific financing public education under the state charter, the authorized charter school funding and the construction grant program. Those are reaffirmations of existing positions. How do they get moved from the existing position because this doesn't prevent the wage act to that? And I understand your question, and as I said before, when outside of this school board meeting, which is a voting meeting, when you, when we get an opportunity, you and I can sit down and I'll go over all of that with you. But since that's not, if you don't have anything specific that you want me to vote on or against, which is the purpose of this particular section of the agenda tonight, then we need to move forward. So is there anything that you want me to vote for or against that we haven't already agreed on? Yes or no? That we haven't already agreed on. Correct. That we have not come to an agreement. We've, we've voted on positions that I asked being asked us to vote on. The rolling vote seven of the specific ones that called out for her. Do you have anything? Aside from what I asked, yeah, I had that question about reaffirming the prevailing wage piece, but we don't need to, okay. that's the position, we don't need to vote separately on that. Anyone else want to uh, discuss any other sections in the proposal to reaffirm any bills? Do like you want me to speak out? I'd like to pull out 622 on page 29 regarding homeless transportation outside of district boundaries. Go ahead. That is going to cost the, this, this district $16,500 in the uh, previous month alone. So I am not in support of maintaining that kind of position. Does Illinois law conform? It must conform with the federal law. Is that the federal position that we have to pay in a homeless busing yeah. cost? Yes, That's a federal position. Yes. Okay. So that actually comes back under the mandate piece here, fighting the mandates. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we be able to? Comes out of federal mandates that cost districts money without allowing districts to make their own decisions. Do you have a motion at this time, uh, John? Mr. Simmons, I'm sorry. As to 
next year. Okay, so would you guide the board and how to develop new resolutions? Yes, yeah, so it, it's pretty self-explanatory when you get it, and if you have any, have any questions, on will um, fill in the blanks. This will just a fill in the blanks. It's just anywhere that the board meeting could all. Which no, I, board. no, if you are, if you have a resolution proposal, you fill in the blanks, and then yes, you bring it to the board, or ask Steve to put it on the agenda, and then we'll just put, we'll discuss that particular resolution. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to move forward. I was just thinking we want to move forward to craft our decision, not to have them just individual things. We will. Yeah. Once you bring it forward as a resolution to the board, we can't discuss anything without it being on the agenda. We have the agenda to discuss it. And it's always it has to be drafted in a form that we can discuss it. Like we get the letters from the recommendations. That's it. Just well, yeah, we can just get it. Okay, you asked me how to do the process. The process is to put the resolution in the form, submit it to the president for the agenda, and then we'll discuss it. You know what? Is this something that you can perhaps? But um, we're on 6.22 right now. I have a question. Go ahead. If it's under federal mandate, don't, don't we have to comply with that if it's under federal mandate? So yeah. the chances of this going anywhere is but that doesn't preclude us from putting forward a particular objection. <coughs> we, can record, we can object. That doesn't mean that it's going to go anywhere, but we have a right as a school board if we vote to support Mr. Simmons' motion. Right now, what's on the floor is his motion without a second. Is there a second as to Mr. Simmons' motion? Let me make it a second. Okay. Any further discussion as to whether we stand up and object to um, deleting the a reaffirmation of homeless student transportation. Just one quick question. Can you remind me how long do we have to pay? Is it, um, it well, two questions. Um, <coughs> is there a cap in terms of the amount that we have to pay? Um, you know, if we get more homeless students that need to be transported out of the district one given year versus another. Um, and then do we have to do we continue to pay that fee for as long as that student or those students are funded to wear? Yes. Um, the answer is there's no cap, number one. And number two, as long as um, their status has not changed, we have to continue to pay, uh, pay our fair share. And who whose responsibility is it to continue to confirm their status, our district, or wherever they're? Well, it depends. It could be our district or the receiver. Other district, whoever, um, where the child is going, usually we reach out, but there is mutual agreements and discussions that take place to find the least expensive transportation. Well, yeah, we had a case, right? Thank you. This past, since I've been on board, um, where there wasn't an agreement on the amount, or when they came up. There's Ms. Hallward, there's a because this is uh, outside of what Mr. Uh, Simmons' motion is, okay. we, we oh. can do a different uh, discussion about what's going on with our particular district. How to, it has to be homeless student transportation, 6.22, whether or not we as a district support reaffirming or, or as Mr. Simmons has made a motion to oppose that uh, reaffirmation. <coughs> How many people are in support of Mr. Simmons' motion? And how many people are opposed to his motion? All right, so that was seven. All right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, to delete that. Any other sections that we want to pull out? Okay, so right now, as to all other sections other than 5.11 and 6.22, uh, is it the board's position that I hope to reaffirm all the other sections in the um, packet? Yes. How many in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. In the agenda, we have the second reading and approval of revised policies. Uh, call for a motion to approve the second reading and approval of revised policies 2 160 or attorney uh, 2 260 
is one of the procedures, 5 colon 5 0, drug and alcohol free workplace, uh, tobacco prohibition, uh, 5 colon 170, copyright, uh, 5 colon 10 equal education opportunities, 7 colon 220 bus conduct, 7 colon 260 exemption from physical activity. 7 colon 3.0 restriction on publications, 7 colon 325 student fundraising activities, and 8 colon 80 uh, gifts to the district. <coughs> Any motion to accept? Mrs. Odom, and second, Mrs. Hort. Marks? Yes. Odom? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Fourth, yeah. Carol, yeah. Yes, we motion passed. Next on the agenda, uh, we have the National School Board Association Conference. Uh, I will call for a motion to pre-approve Mrs. Odom's expenses to attend the National School Board Association Conference in Boston. Mrs. Huckabee, <coughs> you have a second. Mrs. Carol. Simmons. No. Do you have any questions or? Okay. Was there additional information when you asked for the question? No, that is it pertains to tonight. I thought we were trying to figure out the total expenditure. Everyone can look at the 
I'll pull the, link, the information on all of the different sessions and those sessions that are important to you that you would like me to attend. And I'll take that and set up my agenda as to which sections to go to so that I can move forward like I did last time. Real time, I did it on, mem I did it on the uh, iPad, type the notes, send them out immediately while I'm sitting there in the sessions. The, uh, then I'll attend those things that, the, the sessions that you find to be interesting for you or for any of us. Um, last time I picked the sessions that I thought were important for our particular school district, which was the lunchroom, because a lot of parents are dissatisfied with the lunches being a you know aluminum foil packet that you know are, is pre-made. Um, so I went to the Sodesco um, presentation for natural organic foods that are cooked hot. Found out from Ms. Majewski that's not practical for our school district because we don't have lunch rooms. We have to have lunch rooms in each one of our buildings. Then um, went to the after school program because a lot of the parents are upset with the park district after school program, as they call it, the extra innings. And the conferences that I attended were um, all of the different vendors who provide actual education. So an, it's an extended day program in education. There's a specific subject or particular subject that you can sign your child up for for these programs as opposed to just you know playing babysitting and working on their homework alone. And there was a couple of other ones I can't remember all of them. You did the security one for the blue point. Right, the blue point um, security at the time was Sandy Hook and went to see, uh, and I was on the risk management, uh, crisis management committee. So I went to all of those different vendors. And what they have is really cool. I think they're gonna have this year at IASB as well. They have these uh, sessions. They put them all in one area, sort of like the vendors, but they're 30 minute sessions. So you can take advantage of all of the different yeah. ones. Yeah, they're really, really cool. So the, all of the security people, did their starting minutes apart so you can go in here each one of their presentations and figure out which one you like the most and get information from those. Um, well, just in general, I, I think that, um, you know, in looking out how we've utilized this information, I, I think we're moving closer to better utilization uh, and, and more a systematic uh, approach. And, um, and certainly as we get closer to the conference, we can make some hard, fast decisions about um, which uh, sessions we would like this order to attend. And perhaps next year, as we we're planning, we can decide okay, you know, these are ones that the was able to attend. What are some other ones we would have liked to have attended? Um, what is the cost benefit to, uh, to doing that? And are, you know, is this something that we'd like to send an additional person or two additional people to? Uh, given the professional development and value added to our community. And so. I just want to add that anyone, anyone, if you want to go, go. I just know that our responsibility, we pay our money into these associations and we're just giving money away. That's irresponsible, financially not responsible to our district for us to just pay membership fees and get these magazines in the mail and that's what all we do, the only thing we take advantage of. So, in order to actually take advantage of the opportunity of the professional development that they offer, whichever one of you guys want to go, anybody. It's not a vacation for me, as I told you all before. I take, I am in private practice. I take these four days out of my law practice from my clients and going to court and representing them to volunteer my time to go and sit in conference, in conference so that I can bring back the information. No, it's not a vacation day. I don't get sick days or vacation days and get paid. I leave here, leave my family, and I go there. If you guys want to do it, please, somebody step up to the plate. But I don't think it's responsible fiscally for us to continue to pay our money into these associations and not take advantage of the professional development. No, that's so why please I please go. No, that, I, mean, I did. I attended the, the uh, you know, you talked about the federal minutes. I did. I attended the IASB lobbying program down in Springfield. But I keep my own money for that because we all do want to help. So, 
very well aware of the state mandates and was what we you know, recommended them that we adopt Vision 2020. But we haven't gotten any more of that. So maybe when you guys go to the ISP conference, you could follow up on the Vision 2020 piece. You could put that in the So yeah, it's already up. No, it doesn't. It's not one thing. You know what? I think we're getting a little off the agenda. Um, let's do So is there any more discussion about the National School Board Association Conference? One, I mean, I support <coughs> professional development, and it, but I think it doesn't have to be that, to this, at this meeting, but I think at least for myself, I know I'm going to speak from the faculty as well. Like, I need to have a clear understanding of what the process is of, of how we select conferences and who go. I mean, do we do that? You know, when do we need to be looking at what's coming up in 2016? Is that been prior practice of the board? I mean, so that we can look ahead so that what we experienced two weeks ago, we don't have to experience that if possible going okay. forward. So, sure. um, but we can you know, put that retreat, whatever other time we want to talk about that, but you know, have clarity around how these things are selected and who goes, who does it. Is, is there updated, estimated expense on well, that for this? Right now, we don't. Uh, I know two weeks ago we looked up airfare and hotel accommodations. Um, once this, if this passes, um, we would then go to uh, the we would register for the National School Board Association Conference. Um, Ms. Odom would get a um, Confirmation, confirmation number. She would then present that to one of the blocked out uh, hotel rooms, should there be any. Otherwise, she would have to secure her own uh, hotel room, and uh, the district could either, well, if you worry about it, then we would, if all the blocked rooms are unavailable, we would then have to uh, pay the unblocked rate. Um, we would have to look into the cost of airfare this evening or tomorrow. Um, most likely tomorrow morning, and uh, to have that, <coughs> that number. But this uh, conference itself cost $700. Um, I think roughly the blocked room rate was roughly like 250 or something like that, um, somewhere in that range. Uh, and so, how many nights? Three or four? It's three nights. Three nights. Three three nights. Four days, but three nights. So that would be. Plus airfare plus experiments. Yeah, about 1450 plus airfare. Uh, I think it, our estimate last year or was roughly uh, 2200 hours. Is that correct? Ms. Prino is that here. She will be back on Thursday before anything. 22 is probably a reasonable ballpark estimate. 22 to 25. Thank you. Any further questions? Um, Mrs. Majewski? Smith? No. Odom? Yes. Carol? Yes. Marks? No. Fourth? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Paredes? Yes, and the motion has passed. Um, yes? I have one last thing. Sure. Not new business, but Mr. Simmons, I want to apologize to you. Um, Parker has a gift for you, and we will bring that to our next committee to hold meeting. So we apologize. So we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I make a motion to go into, uh, or sorry, I, read, I uh, entertain a motion to go into. Executive session uh, for matters related to personnel, 5IL, 5ILCS 20 slash 2C1, student residency, 5ILCS uh, 120 slash 2C9, and negotiations, 5ILCS 120 slash 2C2. Um, we will probably be about an hour. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yeah. Raise. Yes, the motion is passed.